YouTube, what is good? It's your man Ribs from Doing Film Things. Coming to you from Italy this week. I'm on vacation and I have to quarantine when I get back to the UK. So I figure we do something interesting and film the review of this camera on the beach. So this is a Roliflex. I don't know exactly which model it is right now, but I'll look it up and put it in the description below so that you know. But this is the nice one. It's got a 2.8 lens. You see how big that thing is right there? Um, and it's a classic Zeiss glass. So it's really, really awesome. So I'm really excited to show you this camera because I've had it for a while and I haven't really used it that much just because of the fact that, you know, I couldn't find the right time to do it. So I'm here in Italy, I'm relaxing, I'm chilling, and I like the slow pace of this kind of environment, which I thought would be perfect for this camera. So let me show you some footage of me walking around, taking some pictures, and then we'll go ahead and talk about the specifics. So first things first with this camera is, it's just extremely beautiful. Basically, anywhere I go with this camera, people stop, people stare, people look at me. Sometimes people actually look at me kind of creepily because they're so perplexed and they don't realize that they're being creepy by staring at me. But oftentimes, a lot of other photographers will see this and come up to me and start chatting. And it's actually a lot of fun. You get to know a lot of people in the street and talk to a lot of people because of just how classic this camera is. So, you know, if you don't like attention, then, you know, don't get this camera. But if you're like me and you don't mind chatting up with random people in the street, then you know why not grab this put it around your neck and just wait and see um, and then the other thing is this lens as i said has a 2.8 lens which makes it the premium version because the cheaper versions of this camera which are also just as good usually have a 3.5 this is the 2.8 and therefore it's probably one of the more high priced ones you can find in the roliflex lineup um, in terms of ergonomics i think that's probably one of the most interesting things about this camera i find it a bit of an interesting camera in terms of how to hold. I actually don't really enjoy holding this camera when it's time to take an image. And there's kind of two key things you gotta consider. One is the shutter is down here, so your finger has to be down here. And then of course, you look through the waist level viewfinder here when you're taking a photo. So you look through, and that's how you compose. Um, it's kind of annoying, for me at least, it's something I've never been used to, and that's why it actually took me so long to take this camera out and put it to work. But having walked around it now for like three, four, five days since I've been here, I, don't even, I lost count already. Um, I've gotten used to it a bit more and I think I'm more naturally moving around when trying to compose, especially since everything's inverted. On top of that, this camera is a bit boxy, as you can see. So I don't know if there's a correct way to hold this camera, but I basically cradle it with my hands like this, hands all over it, and that gives me the best grip. Um, I find that with that grip, it's secure, but it's not great for me in terms of keeping it as still as possible. I find that my elbows down and hands like this is not as stable as perhaps using an SLR camera where things are up here and I can use my face and my neck muscles to keep it tight. So, you know, just something to consider. Uh, but overall, you know, th that's why you would use this camera. If you don't like those ergonomics, stay away entirely. If you want a new experience, um, especially if you've never used this kind of camera before, then of course you want to jump into this because it is going to be an interesting challenge. All 
All right, so this camera, of course, very special setup. So you really have to know what you're doing here before you start, because if you're like me, you try to figure out without looking up any videos or instructions, you might mess it up. So first things first with this camera is loading the camera. And that happens through the bottom. So you have to unlock the bottom by turning this right here. And then you lift this latch up and now you can pull on it and that reveals the entire camera. So this looks like any other 120 camera, honestly. It's very similar, but you just need to know one key thing. So you put your film in here and the most important thing you need to do is make sure that when you're pulling your film ready over to put it on this side, you have to slide it under this bar right here. If you don't do that and you go over, the counter mechanism that you're gonna see here in a second just is not gonna work. So you have to do that or else you're gonna mess everything up. And the first time I used this camera, I didn't do that and that was the problem. So you slide the film under here and then you simply just drag it over onto this side, the take up right here. Put the film in there as usual, rotate it a little bit, you know, and hold it with your finger while you're rotating. And then this knob right here, this is the one you rotate. And obviously you close that before you rotate anything. So here, I'll just close it so it's very clear. Latch back down, put the lock on. At this point, your film would be in here, not fully rolled, but it's in. And then you basically take this knob and rotate. And as you rotate, you're gonna see that counter right there that says zero, turn to one. When it hits to one, it's gonna physically not be able to move and it's gonna show one. And that means that you're ready. That's basically all you need to do to load your film and get yourself ready to take a photo. And then of course, composing and actually putting your settings in is the next step. So composing, you do through the viewfinder. And the only thing you need to know is that everything's inverted. So looking left and right is opposite, up and down is opposite. And of course the tilting, that's kind of the hardest part about the inverted um, situation of this viewfinder. After that, you then wanna actually set your focus, which you do with this knob right here. And it has the numbers on it, so you know what infinity is, and you know what 0.09 is, and that's the closest focusing distance, which is not great, you know, it's not that close, but you know, that might be enough for most of you. And then finally, your settings. So this knob right here, and this knob right here, that's how you alternate your settings. And basically, one of them controls shutter speed, and then aperture is on this one. Max aperture is uh, f22, and the minimum aperture is 2.8. And set that in there, and then you're done. There's no light meter, of course. Every single operation here is manual. And if you don't like that, then again, you probably shouldn't go for this camera. But this camera is definitely intended for people who love to tinker and love the slower approach to photography and really want to take their time composing images when they're out there taking pics. So I really like using this camera, honestly. Um, it's pretty cool. It's challenging for me, for sure. It's very different from what I'm used to. I usually go on vacation and bring like a 35 millimeter and I just shoot tons of photos, use a lot of lenses and all that. This is the exact opposite experience. So if you want something that's very calm and kind of simple, but also, you know, interesting and, and just more fine tuned than a typical, you know, faster automatic camera, this is definitely a good job. Um, this is definitely a good option, not job. <laughs> but also I think that there's, you know, there's a lot of beauty to using a square format camera, something that has all these kind of knobs and manual processes, because it really, gives you something extra to do while you're on vacation. And for me, it, it's nice to not only take photos, but also do it with interesting cameras. So definitely vouch for this. I will admit though, I'm still not very good with this camera. I'm a bit slow. There's no light meter here, so I have to use my phone to meter. And then additionally, um, you know, focusing is not very easy. Even though there's a magnifying glass inside here, like I still do miss focus, which is kind of annoying because the last thing you want to do is, is kind of lose a good photo because you didn't get the focus the way you wanted. And then finally, um, the, the lower shutter speeds on this camera are a bit hard to use. Um, I find myself shooting at kind of 1 125th of a second and even 1 150th of a second and things come out a bit blurry and it's kind of frustrating again because on an SLR, I think I could nail those shots with very little issue. So just something to consider and of course you get better with practice. But overall, I still think I vouch for this a lot. You know, beautiful camera, it's a piece of history and it's fun to use. If you're looking to do something that's you know a bit different, maybe a little bit more interesting than your usual camera process, and also do something that's very cool, because honestly, this camera is pretty damn cool, then I highly recommend you look into this, or any TLR for that matter. It doesn't have to be this one um, that has a 2.8 lens and is a bit pricey. Go for the cheaper option. Honestly, the mechanics are gonna be very, very similar, and therefore, it's worth it. So I highly recommend it, and you know, get out there and give it a try. See what you get. All right, y'all, so what do you think about this camera? Is there anything that I miss? Let me know in the comments. I'm curious what experience y'all had because I'm definitely a rookie when it comes to this one, but I'm sure a lot of you out there have used a whole bunch of TR TLRs in the past. So I'm gonna go enjoy the rest of my vacation because when I get back to London, I've got a quarantine now. 
you know, people traveling from Italy back to the UK, you got to do the two weeks. So whatever, I'm going to do it. You know I'm going to spend most of that time in the dark room. So I'm going to be pretty happy. I'm going to pump out a bunch more content and definitely do a whole bunch of printing. So stay tuned for all of that stuff. So, but for now, I'm going to go back to the house, do some more chilling, relaxing, and definitely some more cooking as well because I know y'all watching me on Instagram. So that's what I got for y'all. Peace.